ഓക്കെ അപ്പോൾ ഇവിടെ നമ്മൾ ഇത്ര സമയം ചെയ്ത് നമ്മൾ ഓപ്പറേറ്റേഴ്സിനെ കുറിച്ച് ആലോചിച്ചില്ല കെറ്റ്സ് എങ്ങനെ ഇവോൾവ് ചെയ്യുന്നു എന്ന് മാത്രമാണ് നോക്കിയത് ഓക്കെ അതായത് ഇനീഷ്യൽ ടൈമിലുള്ള ഒരു കെറ്റ് കിട്ടുകയാണെങ്കിൽ ഫൈനൽ ടൈമിലുള്ള കെറ്റ് എങ്ങനെ കിട്ടും എന്നാണ് നമ്മൾ നോക്കിയത് റൈറ്റ് ഇവിടെ നമ്മൾ ചെയ്യുന്നത് ശരിക്കും ഷോ ഷോഡിങ്കർ പിക്ചർ ഇപ്പോൾ നമ്മൾ ചെയ്യുന്നതിൻ്റെ പേരാണ് ഷോഡിങ്കർ പിക്ചർ റൈറ്റ് അപ്പോൾ നമ്മൾ ഇവിടെ ചെയ്തത് ഇതാണ് വി ഡിസ്ക്രൈബ്ഡ് വി ഡിസ്ക്രൈബ്ഡ് ടൈം ഇവല്യൂഷൻ നമുക്ക് വി ഡിസ്ക്രൈബ് ടൈം ഇവല്യൂഷൻ ബൈ കൺസിഡറിങ് ഇവിടെ നമ്മൾ ഓപ്പറേറ്ററിനെ കുറിച്ച് നമ്മളൊന്നും അങ്ങനെ കാര്യമായിട്ട് പറഞ്ഞില്ല ബൈ കൺസിഡറിങ് ടൈം ഇവല്യൂഷൻ ഓപ്പറേറ്റർ ദാറ്റ് അഫക്ട്സ് സ്റ്റേറ്റ് കെറ്റ്സ് നമുക്ക് ഇത്ര സമയം നമ്മൾ ഇതാണ് ചെയ്തത് സ്റ്റേറ്റ് കെറ്റ്സിനെ അഫക്റ്റ് ചെയ്യുന്ന ടൈം ഇവല്യൂഷൻ ഓപ്പറേറ്ററിനെ കുറിച്ചാണ് നമ്മൾ പഠിച്ചത് റൈറ്റ് സോ സച്ച് എൻ അപ്രോച്ച് സച്ച് എൻ അപ്രോച്ച് ടു ക്വാണ്ടം ഡൈനാമിക്സ് ഈസ് നോൺ ഷോഡിങ്ക പിക്ചർ ഓക്കെ ദാറ്റ്സ് നോൺ ആസ്റ്റർ ഷോഡിങ്ക പിക്ചർ ഓക്കെ ഇനി ഹൈസൺ ബർഗ് പിക്ചറിൽ എന്താണ് നമ്മൾ ചെയ്യുന്നത് ഇൻ ഹൈസൺ ബർഗ് പിക്ചർ വാട്ട് വിൽ ഡു ഇസ് ദാറ്റ് വിൽ അസ്യൂം ദാറ്റ് ദ സ്റ്റേറ്റ്സ് ഡു നോട്ട് ചേഞ്ച് ബട്ട് ഓപ്പറേറ്റേഴ്സ് ചേഞ്ച് റൈറ്റ് So Heisenberg picture, we'll say Heisenberg for picture is the formalism. And why are we able to do that? We'll show, we'll, we'll see why we are able to do this, all right? In Heisenberg picture, this is the formalism in which, it's the formalism in which observables, okay, observables rather than state gates. okay so in the heisenberg picture it's not state gets that vary in time okay state gets ella vary cheynathu pagaram observables aanu right observables aanu ivide time and search vary cheynathu right and why are we able to do that why are we able to do that because uh, okay ipo namaku general aitulla unitary transformations inde kaayam nokka നമ്മുടെ ജനറൽ സോ ഇഫ് യു ലുക്ക് അറ്റ് ജനറൽ യൂണിറ്ററി ട്രാൻസ്ഫർമേഷൻസ് ഓക്കെ ഫോർ എക്സാമ്പിൾ സ്പേസ് ട്രാൻസ്ലേഷൻ ഓർ ടൈം ടു എനി യൂണിറ്ററി ട്രാൻസ്ഫർമേഷൻ സോ ലെറ്റ്സ് യു ലുക്ക് അറ്റ് ദ ജനറൽ കേസ് സോ വി ക്യാൻ റൈറ്റ് സോ അണ്ടർ സം യൂണിറ്ററി ട്രാൻസ്ഫർമേഷൻ ഓക്കെ വി ആർ നോട്ട് സ്പെസിഫൈങ് വാട്ട് ബിക്കോസ് ഇറ്റ് കുഡ് ബി ഇറ്റ് കുഡ് ബി സ്പേസ് ട്രാൻസ്ലേഷൻ ഇറ്റ് കുഡ് ബി ടൈം ട്രാൻസ്ലേഷൻ ഇറ്റ് കുഡ് ബി റൊട്ടേഷൻ ഓക്കെ so we will write as alpha u okay and the important point was that the inner product of the form alpha beta r invariant okay this we have already seen these are invariant under unitary transformations right we have already proven this and this is the reason why we take them as unitary okay why because beta alpha goes to beta u dagger u alpha that's equal to beta alpha okay because of the unitary or unitarity property okay now the question that we are asking now is that how do the expectation values okay how do the expectation values because expectation values are usually we measure measure it in average value or expectation value all right in the end what quantum mechanics predicts are expectation values alle എക്സ്പെക്റ്റേഷൻ വാല്യൂ എന്താണ് അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ആവറേജ് വാല്യൂ എന്താണ് എന്നുള്ളതാണ് ക്വാണ്ടം മെക്കാനിക്സ് പ്രൊഡിക്റ്റ് ചെയ്യുന്നത് അപ്പോൾ ഈ എക്സ്പെക്റ്റേഷൻ വാല്യൂസ് എങ്ങനെയാണ് ചേഞ്ച് ചെയ്യുന്നത് അറിയാൻ നമുക്ക് താല്പര്യമുണ്ട് റൈറ്റ് സോ ലെറ്റ്സ് ആസ്ക് ഹൗ ഡു ദ എക്സ്പെക്റ്റേഷൻ വാല്യൂസ് ഓഫ് ഒബ്സേർവിൾസ് ചേഞ്ച് അണ്ടർ സച്ച്
okay, and that's as you enter the transformations. Right? So clearly you know that the expectation value, for example, if you have, I think I'll do it in the next page. Okay. So expectation value in the or generally matrix elements. Okay, let's talk about matrix elements. Alright. So generally if you have beta, expectation value is in a special case on 11 beta is equal to alpha. Okay. So this change like this, we can write it as beta u dagger, correct? beta bra beta goes to bra beta u dagger and you have got x and then what happens to alpha at a later time okay, what happens to alpha it goes to u alpha all right but we can simply write this as because of what do you say the associ we called it the associative property yeah associative axiom i think we called it the associative axiom it doesn't matter which order you multiply it so we can simply write this as beta u dagger x u alpha. Is that correct? That is the meaning of this. This is the expectation value. Here is the beta, here is the beta. All right? With the expectation value, this is a special case. We will take the general case here, general matrix elements. Okay? This may include transition amplitudes, etc. So, we'll, let's write it like this. Okay? But beta x alpha is the quantity. We can evolve in the quantity. States are evolved in angle, it will be written as bra beta u dagger x u alpha. Okay, but you can also combine it like this right? alpha and beta is same at the and then we assume that x goes to x u dagger x u. Okay, expectation value and evolution are not down. All right, so this means that we can have alpha goes to alpha itself. Okay beta goes to beta itself they don't change under the unitary transformation and x goes to u dagger x u all right so we can have this and still have the same expectation values okay or same uh, evolution all right same uh, evolution Uh, same transformation, I think, because transformation for the expectation. Is this clear? Is this clear? Okay, this is very simple, all right. The mathematics of both these approaches are equivalent, all right. So, the simple mathematics. Mathematics above suggest two equivalent. Okay, it's exactly the same thing with respect to any measured quantity. Okay, two equivalent but different approaches to unitary transformation. Okay, what are these two approaches? Approach one. So, approach one is like this. Okay, you can say that alpha transforms to u alpha. Okay, in this case, gets change. All right, in this case, gets change, and operators do not change. Alright? In this case, unitary transformation, time evolution case is the case of the Schrodinger picture. Alright? Now we have to generate it. But if u is the time evolution operator, if u is the time evolution operator, we call this the Heisenberg picture. Okay, now the approach 2 goes like this, alright. We will keep the states or the kets unchanged and we will say x goes to u dagger x u. Okay, with 
Ah, yes, correct, good. Okay, that's a Schrodinger picture. I'm sorry, that's a Schrodinger picture, all right? So, uh, I'm glad to know that you're listening, all right? So, x goes to u dagger x u with uh, state gets unchanged. Okay, now in this case, if u is the time translation operator or time evolution operator, if you use the time evolution operator, okay, then this picture is called, or this approach is called uh, the Heisenberg Heisenberg picture, all right? Or this approach is called the Heisenberg picture, right? Like that. Okay, is that clear? Okay, so the idea is that both pictures, both pictures or both approaches due to the same due to the same results, same results for expectation values of observables. Okay. Right. Now let's uh, <coughs> look a little bit. That's the basic idea. Let's look into it in a little, little bit more detail. All right. So we'll discuss state gets and right. Okay. So let me write it like this. I will take a new page. Okay. State gets and observables state gets and observables in the Schrodinger and the Heisenberg pictures. Okay. So we have already seen this in the Schrodinger picture. In the Schrodinger picture, okay, the operators the operators corresponding to observables. like let's say x, p, y, s, z, etc. Okay, are fixed in time. Okay, in the Schrodinger picture, the observables are fixed in time. They don't change. Are fixed in time. Okay, while state gets <coughs> vary with time okay while well, state gets vary with time all right what about the heisenberg picture <coughs> in the heisenberg picture and then yes yes very good okay we'll write it like this the operators observables no operator but will be specific here the operators corresponding to observables corresponding to observables vary with time can you read my handwriting? Is it difficult? No. All right, good. And the state gets, and the state gets are fixed. 
at what they were at T0. At T0. Alright? Okay. Now, in the middle of the detail, let us know. Come on. So, for convenience, convenience, uh, let us set t0 equal to 0 in u of t comma t0. Alright? And bring in a t0 0 angle, we will denote it as. will denote it as simply u of t, alright? That saves us a lot of time and space, alright? So, this, by this we mean that u of uh, t comma t0 equal to 0 is equal to u of t, okay? And this, as we have seen, uh, in the case where the Hamiltonian has no explicit dependence on time, exponential minus i h t by h cos, okay? u of t is not the same. Okay. Now, let us look at the Heisenberg picture. In the Heisenberg picture, HP in the, right? in the Heisenberg picture, observable or let us say the Heisenberg picture observable, right? The Heisenberg picture observable is defined, is defined by, superscript Okay, this is a Heisenberg picture and it is a function of time generally, okay, it changes with time and we will write it as the u dagger x u. In this case, it is simply because we are talking about time evolution, it is u, it is u dagger, okay, Schrodinger t, okay, this is the definition of the Heisenberg picture operator at time t, okay. And then we will know that Schrodinger picture operator is fixed at time t equal to 0, it does not change. All right? You take that operator and uh, subject that to this particular unitary transformation, u dagger x u kind of unitary transformation and you will get the Heisenberg operator at time t. Is this clear? Yeah? So, here h and s stand for Heisenberg and Schrodinger respectively. All right? Now, you can also do, you, you can also what do you say? If you are given the Heisenberg picture operator, you can also find the Schrodinger picture operator. How do you do that? You take, you multiply by u on the left side, u left side, and u dagger on the right. Okay, so you see that a s is equal to. What do you do? You multiply by u on the left, u a h. Okay, and u dagger on the right. Is that correct? that correct? Yeah, okay. Okay, Schrodinger uh, operator time there, time t and Heisenberg operator you have to evolve it backwards in time, right? You have to find the corresponding op operator at time t0. Okay, you have just multiplied, you have just used the unitarity property u dagger u is equal to u, u dagger equal to i. Okay, have I done it correctly? Yes. Is that correct? Alright, okay, so this we can do. Okay, now at time t equal to at time t equal to 0, the Heisenberg picture observable. Okay, time t equal to 0 and again, Heisenberg picture observable. Schrodinger picture observable exactly same one, all right? Observable coincides. Okay, Korchi Kaidin Okumbrana, the Schrodinger picture observable will have stayed frozen and the Heisenberg picture observable will have evolved, all right? Coincides with the Schrodinger picture. Observed. Is that correct? So we can write it like this a h of 0 is equal to a s. Okay, that is the Heisenberg picture operator at time 0 
is equal to Schrodinger picture operator at all times. Okay, Schrodinger, Schrodinger picture operator at all times is equal to Heisenberg picture operator at time t zero. Okay, what about state gates? The state gates also coincide, right? The state gates, state gates. also coincide between the two pictures at t is equal to 0. All right. What happens to the state gets in the Heisenberg picture at later times? Later times, the Heisenberg picture Heisenberg picture state gets state gets are frozen at what they were at t equal to zero. All right, but in the meaning of alpha comma t zero t0 equal to 0 at any time t in the Heisenberg picture. Okay, So this is the state at any time t in the Heisenberg picture. This is simply is equal to alpha comma t0 is equal to 0. Okay, It does not change. t0 equal to 0 is equal to 0. That is the same as the Heisenberg picture gets. Alright. Okay, so that's independent of time, right? Now, what happens to the Schrodinger picture? The Schrodinger picture the Schrodinger picture state varies with time, right? And we already know how it varies, alpha, comma, t0 equal to 0, that's the, this means that the state was alpha at the time t0 equal to 0 and at time t, right? This is equal to, in our Schrodinger picture, we can s in there, okay? We can s in there, but in this discussion, we'll write it like that, okay? Right? This is in the Schrodinger picture, okay? What happens to expectation value? the expectation value of some operator is obviously the same in both pictures right so we can actually show this we can actually show this we'll write it like this alpha comma t0 equal to 0 time t okay in the Schrodinger picture okay then expectation value Schrodinger picture little expectation value not only done okay take the Schrodinger states and uh, what is a sandwich the operator I'll write it as a Schrodinger operator okay or uh, yeah it, I think I'll write it as a Schrodinger operator Okay. Right. Now this you can write it as alpha comma. We write it more compactly so you can. Okay. The prove we are alpha comma t zero t. Okay. A let's say Schrodinger at alpha comma t0 t okay in the Schrodinger picture we are doing this in the Schrodinger picture all right this is equal to we'll write as alpha comma t0 is equal to 0 but t0 and t0 equal to 0 and I'll let go so I think I should write that let me write it clearly now Okay. 
Schrodinger picture will be the same as this is alpha, comma t0 is equal to 0. Okay, the Schrodinger picture and the Heisenberg picture are the same. Aan. Alle, states are the same in Schrodinger picture and Heisenberg picture. That's why we don't have a subscript to the right? Okay, so this is uh, the same because it's the same. Right. So this is, you can write as u dagger as u alpha, comma t0 equal to 0. Okay, now we can write this as alpha comma t0 equal to 0 is the same as alpha comma t0 equal to 0 at time t in the Heisenberg picture. Either sum the state in the Heisenberg picture, either sum the state in the t0 equal to 0, initial time in the state. Is that correct? That is alpha comma t0 equal to 0 and alpha comma t0 equal to 0 at any time t in the Heisenberg picture. All right, these are equal. Is that clear? Yeah. And what is u dagger au? That is simply a h okay. at the time t uh, and then you have got alpha comma t0 equal to 0 is alpha comma t0 equal to 0 at any time t in the Heisenberg picture. All right. So we have started with the expectation value in the Schrodinger picture and we have shown that it is equal to the expectation value in the Heisenberg picture. All right. Okay, fine. Yes. I think we'll just take a few minutes and complete the next section also related to this, the Heisenberg equation of motion, all right? We'll also discuss the Heisenberg equation of motion. Actually, it's Dirac who got this equation, but he named it after Heisenberg, all right? Heisenberg equation of. Okay, this might be important because this shows the correspondence between classical and quantum mechanical systems very correctly, right? IH cross number differential equation satisfied by this U operator. Okay, this is H U. Okay, compacted in the in the dagger, it occurred, right? You can take the Hermitian conjugate of this, and you will see that minus i h cross dou u dagger by dot t is equal to u dagger h dagger. And what is h dagger? H dagger is h because it's Hermitian, right? We'll call this equation one. Okay. Now we look at the Heisenberg operator. Heisenberg operator at time t. Okay. This we said that is equal to u dagger of t the Schrodinger operator multiplied by u of t, right? Now, what we need is the time derivative, okay? So, uh, let's see the, uh, so we, we assume that this a s has no explicit time dependence, okay? In the Schrodinger picture, explicit time dependence of the operator on Dava, that's a different case, okay? The Hamiltonian could be depending on time in the sense that the energy changes with time. This is possible. It means an explicit time dependence, okay? Atherent time dependence in a course, all right. So let's assume that AS has no assuming AS has no explicit time dependence. Okay, that's a simple case time dependence. Okay, so in that case, we can write DAH of T divided by DT is equal to. I'll write it as since it depends on T and T0, etc., I'll use the partial derivative dou u dagger by dou t, okay, a s, you just use the product rule, okay, since a s we assume does not depend on time, we will write this as u dagger a s dou u by dou t, is that correct? I have just used the product rule, is that fine? Yes. All right. Now, now, we already know this, okay, this is dou u dagger by dou t, here we have already seen, it is, uh, what is it? It is uh, minus 1 by i h cross, right, minus 1 by i h cross u dagger h, is that correct? So, this is minus 1 by i h cross u dagger h from equation 1, okay, and then you have got a s u of t plus u dagger a s 
do u by do t do u by do t from here is 1 by i h cross okay 1 by i h cross h acting on u is that correct yeah did i make a mistake no i think that's correct all right so i have to go to the next page so i'll just write it like this you can check if you are following this this i can write as i pull this one by i h cross outside okay minus term of the second area okay add the plus term area so you write the second term first this is u dagger a s okay and what you have is uh, and then uh, h u is that correct minus u dagger h a u l a a u all right now this is u dagger a and then uh, this is u dagger h and then this is a u what we what we would like to have is something like u dagger a u all right then you'll get the heisenberg operator is that correct u dagger a u so what you do is that you multiply by a u u dagger here okay is that fine because this is i right and here also you multiply by u u dagger right then what do we get here you get u dagger a u here and u dagger a u here and you have got u dagger h u and u dagger h u here is that correct is that all right now we what we have is the commutator what is u dagger a s u that is simply a h is that correct so we write it as a h okay and then we write i'll just write as u dagger h u we should put the operator sign that's the notation we have been following okay so okay minus u dagger h u and then a h all right so this i can write as 1 by i h cross commutator of with u dagger h u okay now in in most cases u dagger this u dagger is normally u dagger and the form is you raised to minus i h t by h cross all right but this is also a function of the hamilton so they commute in most cases they commute all right but u dagger h u nalle namukku h nanne edum because the commute ayund you can take it to this side and then becomes i is that correct okay so i'll uh, write it as u dagger h u what is this nammal start is d a h by d t kandu pidikkanana okay so since uh, i'll just write it down in elementary applications actually technically you could write this as hamilton in the heisenberg picture okay angane ezhudha chela cases namukku ingane ezhudanda avashyam varu all right chigal u dagger h u is just like a a dagger u dagger a u is a h in the same way you can write this as h in the heisenberg picture all right but here in elementary applications since u is equal to u to minus i h t by h cross ipo nammal edan povunu completely general alla all right so we can write this u dagger h u is equal to u dagger u h okay that's equal to h right so we can write d a h by so we can finally write d a h by dt is equal to 1 by i h cross fine this is known as the heisenberg equation of motion this is known as the heisenberg equation of motion all right okay now the important thing about this is that you can compare this with the classical case for classical case we have a function of q of p and iron angle you could always write da by dt as a with h where is ivada ivada commutator aanu ivada poisson bracket a okay le right so this equation is known as the heisenberg equation of motion 
We derived it using the properties of time evolution operator and the defining equation for the Heisenberg operator. All right. So now we just make a quick comparison. We make a quick comparison with classical physics. Okay. You can read it in the textbook. I won't be too elaborate. All right. In classical physics, I'll write. Are you familiar with the Poisson bracket formalism? Yeah. So in classical mechanics, let's say A is some function of Q and P, right? In that case, we can write dA by dt is equal to A with H, okay? So this is a function, this is a function, this is a function, and this bracket here is called the Poisson bracket, okay? Where a with h. The operators are usual functions of position and momentum. Right? Where a with h, a Poisson bracket. So is the Poisson bracket. Okay, is the Poisson bracket. All right. Now, here, uh, the, 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 the classical mechanical equation, quantum mechanics equation, the correspondence of light. All right. So, the, the, the observer is the Dirac. All right. So, okay. So, Dirac observe the carry down. You take the usual. Okay. You take the usual Poisson bracket. All right. And you convert it. If a Poisson bracket no given down or another, it's one by IH cross commutator. Is that correct? Right. With a Poisson bracket. It occurring. Any pair of it another one by IH cross commutator. Back in the same manner. Okay. Or if there are some good individual lamp functions and individual lamp operator. Okay. So, Dirac found that you can uh, Poisson bracket. So, so what Dirac found was that, uh, uh, what do you say, you can, you, you have this correspondence, all right, between classical and quantum. But Dirac is the thing, you know, if you have a Poisson bracket in classical, okay, you have got a Poisson bracket in classical, you convert it into a commutator of the corresponding operators, you convert it into a Commutator of corresponding operators, right? As matter of One by h cross, correct. All right. Divided by i h cross, and you will get the corresponding quantum mechanical equations. Okay, you will get the corresponding quantum mechanical equation. Is the Dirac conjugate correspondence? Okay, with the complete total correspondence, all Okay, with our Poisson bracket, with the commutator, no problem. That is classical analogy. All operators, no. It is working. Okay. Okay, so, we have the Hamiltonian momentum position is in a classical analysis. Is that correct? That is the work. All right. But this is the general analysis. Classical analysis is not operators. Classical analysis is not operators. That is spin operators. Okay. Spin operators are the Heisenberg, uh, Heisenberg picture. The Heisenberg equation of time evolution is satisfied. All right. That is the spin is equal to 1 by ih cross. This is fine. Okay, this has no classical analog. Alright. Up either a palapodum, your equation a palapodum, a classical mechanics in the quantum mechanics like a variator in a quantization or a canonical quantization. Okay, classical mechanical naming and dangle, I mean corresponding at a quantum mechanical naming like a conduit can lay you, variator can around. Alright, but she's in a personal unique and a cellular case is a work in. Alright, but she is unique at a variable. Okay, the epitome character at a quantum theory of null and null, but some cases it works. Alright, so now this correspondence, alright, if you have a commutator, okay, if you take the commutator divided by, what you see there, goes to the Poisson bracket, alright, this works, alright, so quantum mechanics, in the classical mechanics, like you are, that is the classical mechanical analog quantities, alright, so now we are emphasizing this, Classical mechanics can be derived from QM. Alright. Classical mechanics. Uh, classical mechanics are another quantum mechanics and approximation at an Alright. Classical mechanics can be derived from QM. Alright. But not always the other way. Okay, this all suggests that quantum mechanics is more fundamental, right? Nature is fundamentally 
quantum mechanical. What we see as the classical world is actually some sort of an approximation. All right. 